Hello, hello. Today I will be featuring a ship that I, well, I recommended since it first came out and it has proven to be very reliable. That is the Scharnhorst. The matchmaking puts me against mostly tier 8s, a couple tier 9s and I think like, uh, is there a single tier 7? Yeah, there's Belfast and I think a Leander that was failed division. Mostly though, I'm pretty up tiered in this game. And um, we're all 2 DDs versus 2 DDs, so obviously keeping our DDs alive is very important in any sort of domination game. The less DDs you have, the more important it is that you try to play around them and help them as much as possible. And now, case in point, this Loyang pushing alone into B. I, I call for uh, the team to give him back up, those that are near him. Hopefully the, the Royal Navy cruiser says uh, Roger, and I hope they help him out because if you have two DDs, these are very important tools for winning the game. We also have a Chapaev, which is one radar, but they had at least a Belfast on their team, so they also have counter radars, which is of course going to be an issue, especially Belfast really eats DDs alive because they tend to radar from such a close range. Now, um, the Scharnhorst is a ship that I've recommended ever since I first played it. I think this ship is insanely fun. But I do know a lot of people struggle with it, because it's not quite as straightforward as the average battleship. And that's mostly because the Scharnhorst doesn't deal well with angled ships. Bigger battleships can kind of overmatch and uh, pen through awkward angles, whereas the Scharnhorst with only 283mm guns doesn't really deal that well with being angled against. So you kind of have to pick your battles depending on that. Case in point, we see a lot of ships pushing down into A here. Uh, you go, Ognaboy? The only reason for the Ognaboy to get spotted now is the Chapai next to me popping a very early radar. Which is actually not a bad play, because uh, he saw A was being capped, so he went for the quick radar. But I think he popped it too early, so we, I actually only got one volley off. I think he popped it as he sailed in, so it was kind of wasted. And now the Ognaboy just smoked up and disappeared from vision. I did miss my initial volley though, which is a shame. And I feel I could have landed that volley if I had taken the time to aim better. But then again, that's the problem uh, when he doesn't inform the team. If you're gonna radar, let your team know, popping radar here and here and so forth. Because that's very useful information for the rest of the team. Uh, we managed to cap B, but our Neptune died, so that's once a bit of a problem. I mean, getting the cap is great, losing a Neptune early on is not the best thing, especially since they're now counter-capping B. But, um, moving on to that uh, weakness that the Scharnhorst has of being not dealing well with being angled against. And as you can see, the majority of the enemy fleet is pushing down towards A. If we look at the minimap, the majority of the enemy team is pushing down towards A. My team is also pushing down towards A. So it's pretty clear at this point that there's going to be a major fight down at A, where they will butt nose to nose against each other. These battleships will be duking it out. They're all, of course, higher tier than I am. Uh, so in general, I don't really want to be there. First of all, even though the Scharnhorst is tanky, if you aim for the superstructure, you can still do good damage to it, even when you are angled, especially when you're facing multiple higher tier ships. Second of all, uh, I don't want to be there. One of the strengths of the Scharnhorst is the concealment, the maneuverability, and the fast turret traverse. These are all strengths it has. So I use my concealment here. You notice that I insta-repair the fire. The only reason I insta-repair this fire is because I'm undetected. And honestly, I don't expect to get more H fires on me because the one who shot me was the rune who was disengaging already. So highly unlikely that I will take more fire, which is why I was confident enough to blow my repair on a single fire. Something which I usually don't recommend. I spot the lander moving out of the cap and he manages to just dodge. But you note, I'm constantly moving away from A. I don't want to be at A anymore. I want to get into a flanking position where I get these broadsides. And as you can see, I'm already getting access to some broadsides I couldn't be able to reach if I was down at A myself. So this makes me much more useful and allows me to play to the strengths of this ship, uh, which is maneuverability and the fast reload, which allows me to punish these broadsides. But uh, trying to brute force it down at A is never going to work. At this point though we're down two cruisers and we have lost both A and B. Our Lo Luoyang though is actively contesting B and trying to get it back for our team, which is great. 
and uh, I'm gonna see if I can push in there and maybe get rid of this Leander. As you can see, I'm sailing straight towards B. I am keeping myself angled against all these enemy ships. In fact, the entire enemy fleet is down there, but I'm so heavily angled, and in any battleship, including the Sharn Horse, if you're angled like this, you won't take a lot of damage. Now I spot a priority target, though. I spot the Belfast, which, as far as I can tell, is their only radar ship, and that is a huge, huge threat for our team. So if I manage to get rid of this guy, that would be fantastic for our team. So what I'm doing here is I'm initiating a, an aggressive trade. I know that pushing in the way I am, sailing straight towards the enemy team like this, closing the distance, I put myself at the risk of being shot at, which I am being. I, many, all of these battleships are probably now focusing me and you can see all this incoming fire. But I'm okay with this. I'm willing to trade this damage on my angled hull in return for dealing significant damage to this Belfast. This is an aggressive trade and by pushing this unexpected flank I'm also putting the Belfast in a really awkward position because he can't angle against me because if he tries to angle against me it means giving broadside to all these ships down at A. You see how many with this blob of ships down at A that are also shooting him? He has to angle against them or he will die. So I pushed him into a horrible position and yes I'm taking some damage, I got double fires on me and a lot of people are targeting me. I'm calling target, let's hope people actually finish this target since I am eating a lot of damage here. But if I do manage to get the Belfast then this trade has been excellent. Mugami is angled, and as I said, Sharnhorst doesn't deal well with angled targets. I'm hoping someone will finish that Belfast that I kept targeting, because you saw he had to sail behind that island just to get into cover from me. And ultimately, we do get the Belfast kill. I had to trade a lot of health for this kill. Um, in fact, looking, I'm going to burn quite significantly here. So I traded a lot of health for this kill, but ultimately, I still consider this a high-value trade because I traded what was ultimately just a bunch of mostly repairable health from my own health pool and I got rid of the enemy radar ship. So the trade was excellent. And uh, I also got into a position where I'm very close to B and uh, I'm able to contest and push B very soon. Another point here is that when I pushed in like I did, note that I didn't push in without having an exit plan. My exit plan was from the beginning to get into this cover behind this island where I could disengage because I knew I was going to get focused by everyone on the enemy team just like I did. This was a willing trade that I initiated and uh, I was more than willing to take it simply because this island was in front of me so I knew I had an exit plan. I had a way to disengage. And RNG really hates me, I get extremely unlucky, but this Mugami is a very close range cruiser, so my secondaries do finish him. Unfortunately though, he gets a volley off, so I lose an unnecessary 6000 health there, that I could have avoided losing if um, Dispersion hadn't trolled me the way it did. We have managed to even out the score though and uh, I'm in a pretty good position to help this Akatsuki at B now and uh, prevent this push because there's a high risk here that if the enemy pushes through B you note that my team who's all at A they'll get uh, surrounded they'll encircle us and surround us and I need to stop this I need to prevent this from happening so I'm kinda like uh, plugging this uh, B hole this B hole <laughs> Okay, oh god, I think I just created another meme. Anyway, I'm kind of plugging this uh, weakness in our defenses so that they don't uh, they don't push through B and flank us. Uh, uh, I saw a DD pushing in, it was an Ognaboy and there's possibly a Benson in there as well. So um, I stop and I reverse. He smokes up because obviously he wants to torp and shoot me, but I can just reverse back behind the island and I'm undetected and uh, he's pretty much wasted his torps. So this prevents their push from here and it looks like the rest of my team has realized what is happening and realized that we need to do something about this B weakness. So they are pushing in to help us. Can I shoot through this? Nope. Arcs are too flat and that small island there blocks me. I haven't done the most impressive damage yet. I mean, we're halfway through the game and I only have 39,000 damage, but uh, my ki the one kill that I have gotten has been very high impact. And my positioning in general, my, my positioning forced the Belfast to push into a situation where he got killed. And my positioning here at B is completely uh, preventing their push. So all of these are great things. And even though the damage doesn't reflect it, um, it shows you just how important being in the right position at the right time is. Friedrich de Grosse is pushing up, so I assume he's running Hydro. So I'm more than ready to be able to shoot these guys that he might spot. 
Kutsu pops up showing full broadside. This should be some heavy, heavy damage on him, but then again, RNG is RNG. And I don't get any citadels. I do chunk him out quite heavily, and it looks like the Friedrich is following it up with his own volley. And those two volleys are enough to finish him off. My torps into the smoke are not gonna land any hits, but I do try to focus. The Ognavoy is, of course, the priority target here. Uh, the Leander, while of course it's good to get rid of the Leander, uh, they have two DDs and we have two DDs. That means the most important target here is absolutely the Ognevoy. But the Ognevoy already used his Torps, and it looks like this Leander is trying to turn the Torps. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get rid of him. Because he's used one side of his Torps, and uh, there's a risk he turns and uses his other side. And Friedrich de Grosse is quite vulnerable to being Torped because of its large size. So I am trying to help him out here, and see, so, yeah, there he goes. That's He's almost certainly Torping when he turns like that. See if I can maybe finish him. Oh, looks like the Akatsuki Torps. The Akatsuki actually made a pretty interesting move there. He pushed in between that gap because there were no enemies there. And he torped them from an unexpected angle, which obviously caught the slander off guard. Now, he would probably have died regardless, but still, it was a pretty interesting play. Now, though, uh, our team has finally managed to get a cap, something we have struggled with quite a lot and uh, they have secured C and well I threw the Grosse, those were the torps that the lander dropped you saw when I turned and I said he's guaranteed torping um, the Fried de Grosse probably didn't realize that he was doing that but usually when you see a Royal Navy cruiser these guys will always angle against you these guys will always avoid trying to give you broadside if you see one of them suddenly giving you broadside that's like putting up a big red sign I am torping watch out and you need to keep that in mind that's that's a, honestly a weakness that you need to recognize um, they are made those ship cruisers are made of paper and everyone learns early on in royal navy cruisers to never give broadside or, or they will get deleted so a broadside like that yeah that's a pretty big sign that yep we are about to torp you pretty underwhelming volley on the rune and my free to take also body floods to death but because the enemy team is so focused on A, where they have been admittedly winning the fight, they have been quite consistent, quite easily even winning the fight, uh, I am trying to secure B for my team, because this is quite important. Note that I'm angling away from all the ships down south, because I don't want to get hit now, because I don't want someone to reset it. The Ogna boy tries to go for a cheeky play here, he shoots me to reset the cap and delay it, which is occasionally smart if he had a smoke to back him up. But in the open like this, at 10km from a Scharnhorst, far far too risky of a play, and I instantly punish him. And uh, that was too greedy of a play. Yes, he did secure the cap, or yes, he did reset the cap, and yes, he did delay it, but the trade-off was losing his life, and he was their only DD, and we still have two DDs left. So, at this point, I've killed one of their DDs, and I've killed their radar. This, of course, means that they have no good tools to deal with our DDs anymore. So even though it is uh, 6 versus 5 and they have 5 battleships, which is, sounds like a really terrible thing, like, uh oh, they can kind of like steamroll us, uh, the difference is that we now have 2 DDs who I've managed to give complete free reign, which means both my DDs are going to be able to torp and torp and torp, and even if these guys run hydro, it's going to force them to give broadside, force them to angle in places they don't want to, and ultimately even if they dodge and turn at some point they will eat torps so at this point time is in our favor because we also secured b which means even though we were behind at points quite heavily early on uh, now the score is quickly evening out and uh, the longer we stay alive the more time these guys will have to work and put in an effort to win this game the problem here is of course though that i am really the only one spotted at this point and they got a half HP Bismarck and a Friedrich de Grosse there and these are two quite heavy hitters and I need to be careful I want to deal damage to them but I try to angle and even when I angle if they hit high enough on my belt or in my superstructure you can see that was both of them shot at the same time and I lost 7k now 7k doesn't sound like that much but the Scharnhorst HP pool isn't really that impressive and here I'm in a here I honestly I think this is a mistake I made I wasn't paying enough attention to my surroundings and what happens here is that I'm forced to dodge this island uh, so I don't ground the problem is I could have done this while undetected if I had dodged this if I made sure to not shoot before dodging it or if I'd move quicker to avoid it and that cost me some what was that something like 11 12k health and that's of course because I'm forced to give broadside to make sure I don't ground 
and because I'm forced to do this, I end up eating a lot of damage. So now we have to play extremely safe. Uh, I still have a heal left, of course. I run Superintendent. Uh, you know my recommended build for the Sharn Horse, which I love. But now I'm going to have to play extremely safe. And in terms of playing extremely safe, and in a way that actually supports my DDs, I switch to HE. Now what is the idea between HE here? Uh, with this constant torping, you can see that was a torp hit on the Frida Tegrasa. With this constant torping, I knew it was just a matter of time before one of these guys would eat a torpedo. And of course, if they eat a torpedo, it's almost guaranteed flooding, which means they will have used their repair. And suddenly the fires, even though the fire's chance isn't that impressive, and the HE damage isn't that impressive, I mean, look at that, that's not, that's not a lot of damage, um, any fires I cause now are permanent. And that is a significant thing because, well, this guy damage con. So these, both of these guys are now vulnerable to my HE. And obviously any fires that I cause are going to be a significant pain for them. And uh, that's exactly why I'm doing it. I'm also, this way I ignore any sort of angling they do. Because as I mentioned early on in this game, um, this was the kind of situation you don't want to end up in the Scharnhorst. Uh, when the enemy battleships are angled against you. This is where they have the advantage because their heavier pen and heavier guns can do more damage to you while you're angled while, while you struggle to do damage to them while they are angled. Of course this guy's giving broadside now because I'm shooting HE so he really, he's trying to bring all his guns to bear to get rid of me. But I got my second fire on him at this point, and he's pretty toast. I switched to AP because, well, two fires. It's unlikely I'm going to get any more fires. I got the two fires on his superstructure, which are the two fires I usually recommend people should go for. And once you have those, it's not uh, worth it going for any additional ones. I'm going to see if I can maybe punish this Friede de Grosse, who's turning to dodge torps, and in the process it's giving me a lot of broadside. And as I said, broadsides you're great at punishing, you can do a lot of damage to broadsides, but in general you want to avoid uh, trying to shoot AP at angled targets. I use HE extremely rarely in the Scharnhorst, and that's because I want to put myself into positions where I don't have to use it. If you find yourself using a lot of HE in a battle, um, then you're probably mispositioning to begin with. For example, if I'd gone down to A at the start instead of repositioning up north as soon as I saw that that was where the two teams were going to clash, I would probably have been forced to use a lot of HE. And that would of course have been a sign of um, misposition. And that's kind of what it comes down to. It's kind of when uh, Hindenburg captains tell me that they use tons of HE in a game. And all I can think of when they tell me that is that they, they don't understand that they're putting themselves in a position where they are unable to use the AP to its full strength because the AP is so much better. So anytime you find yourself uh, forced to use an armament type that isn't optimal for your ship, you gotta consider, am I positioning myself in the optimal way? And usually the answer is a no, because well, as I said, you're using the wrong type of ammo. But I do manage to get a fire early on on the Sturpitz, and it looks like he's gonna eat the Torp. I don't know if he ate the Flooding there or not, but he they have two ships remaining. The Sturpitz is one of them, and at least my fire is sticking on, and it seems, it seems he has no repair, so this fire is actually going to burn him down. And that's my Kraken, which is, of course, always satisfying, and especially in a game like this, where you face mostly higher tiers, and um, mostly pretty hard targets to deal with because, well, I didn't really have a lot of uh, free cruisers to shoot at. There were smoked up Kutuzov, smoked up Leanders, um, ships that are usually fairly tricky to deal with. And uh, in general, German battleships, of course, no chance to citadel them, and getting close to them means putting yourself in their secondary range, which is something you don't want to do either. In the Scharnhorst, ma maintaining this optimal distance is usually the best. Bismarck is giving too much broadside, but there's only 25 seconds left, which means, uh, well, he's kind of desperate, and I'm just going to punish him as much as possible while he does this. You can see Adrenaline Rush, of course, has kicked in pretty heavily at this point because I'm so low HP. My gun reload is like 15-16 uh, seconds, which is, of course, excellent. This is cruiser reload on a Scharnhorst, which, makes, which is why, of course, I love this build. He's angling, so I am higher for his superstructure, but I don't think my shells will even have time to land as this game ends. And looking at the scoreboard, well, this was my daily win in this ship, so um, 
pretty good XP rewards. I wasn't running too many flags because the reason the reason I wasn't running too many XP flags was because I actually wanted to complete this EU mission, which required you to get a croc and uh, classic EU missions, pretty ridiculous requirements. But ultimately, I do get my croc and I do get the dreadnought. So a lot of tanking done and a lot of a lot of damaging done. So overall, a pretty good result. Looking at the team XP, 2.6k which is pretty nice considering I only really helped in capping one point and then was capping B and that was just a partial cap. All the rest of the XP came from basically dealing damage to every possible thing. A lot of divisions in this game but uh, ultimately that didn't matter. The Scharnhorst as a ship does very well in solo play because it's very... it's quite good at dealing with multiple things. Um, you have the speed and the maneuverability to play to be able to disengage and engage from positions you like. You have the concealment if you run my build to disengage when necessary. The anti-air is good enough that people don't really want to strike you. And overall it's a quite a balanced solo ship. The weakness is of course the lack of gunpower, especially against angled. But if you use your positioning to your advantage, like I did in this uh, in this commentary, uh, then you can work around this weakness and still bring the strengths of it up to bear better. Detailed report wise, um, while main battery damage of course, HE did very little damage, but the fires I caused towards the end were very high impact fires because of course all the torpedo spam that I enabled my DDs to do um, force them to blow their repairs, which was why the HE spam turned out to be quite useful in the end. 89k damage tanked, not that impressive. Well, it's it's a pretty okay considering the HP pool is only 56k, but more important is of course the potential damage. 2.4 million potential damage on a ship that only has 56k health. Uh, it shows you just how much damage I negated by good angling and in general good dodging. In fact, the only time I ate damage that I considered unnecessary was the one time where I was forced to turn and give broadside because of the island and I ended up eating an 11k volley. And that kind of shows you just how vulnerable the ship is if you do have to give broadside. The tankiness re relies heavily on how angled you can remain. Damage upon your spotting 57k considering I'm kind of a battleship, that's pretty good. Uh, but overall a pretty fun game to show both the weaknesses and the strengths of this ship. Crits and XP, 30k Captain XP because I wasn't running too many flags, uh, but overall a pretty good result. Now I won't bother showing my build since I've already went over my build in a previous commentary. I can link it in the comment below so you guys know uh, which build I'm talking about since it's been well it hasn't been that long since I last covered the Sharonhorst but I get daily I get new viewers every day who might not have seen it anyway that was all for me I hope you guys enjoyed it